Welcome to the Ultrascale Architecture Block RAM Cascade and Power Saving Quick Take video. In this video we're going to see some of the new features provided by the Block RAM in the Ultrascale Architecture and the benefits and how these uh, enable the user to reduce total power consumption uh, of their system. So with the world demanding more information to more destinations sooner, equipment manufacturers are required to build more capability and intelligence into their systems. This results in more data being transported around the system at increased data rate. And uh, for the FPGA that sits at the center of these applications, th there are multiple effects. So the FPGA needs to receive much more data through parallel and serial IOs, uh, which subsequently need to be processed and buffered. So in order to buffer these large quantities of data within the FPGA, the ultrascale architecture contains numerous columns of 36 kilobit block RAMs. Each of these columns uh, is split into individual block RAMs of 36 kilobits, and each individual 36 kilobit array can be split into two independent 18 kilobit RAMs. Uh, and these have many uh, different configurations and features, such as single port, simple and true dual port, FIFO, and error checking and correction. The flexibility of the ultrascale block RAM is further enhanced by dedicated cascade routing that enables the creation of deeper memories out of multiple 36 kilobit blocks. So every block RAM column has the ability to cascade to create larger RAMs from the bottom up. The block RAM cascade has numerous configurations and options depending on the desired functionality. So shown here we have a diagram of all of the features. Note that there are three cascade multiplexers, one at the input to the block RAM, one at the input to the output register, and then one at the output of the block RAM. The user is at liberty to configure the various block RAMs how they choose, but there are several common use models provided in the Ultrascale Architecture Memory Resources User Guide, or UG573, available on Xilinx.com. One of the more common use models is to cascade the data out of the lower block RAM to create a very deep memory that can be implemented using only very few logic resources. In addition to a simple method for creating large memories, there are several other advantages to the block RAM cascade. So there is no requirement to use either fabric interconnect or routing to connect signals between the block RAMs, thereby avoiding depleting adjacent logic of its re routing resources. The dedicated routing and multiplexers are fixed function and they are located within the block RAM column, resulting in very high performance implementation and avoiding routing congestion. In some configurations, it's only necessary to enable one block RAM of the array at a time. Uh, this enables dramatic reduction of total power consumption of a multi-block memory array. Using the ultrascale architecture block RAM cascade is very simple. It is determined by the size of the memory array in the user design. Any memory with a bus width of 72 bits or fewer and a depth of 512 bits or greater will automatically be placed in the same block RAM column and the cascade feature will be utilized. There are two main methods by which to create block memory arrays using the block memory generator and writing code to infer memory. First let's take a look at the block memory generator. So here we see a Vivado project to find the block memory generator, we need to go into the IP catalog, look for memories and storage elements. Under RAMs and ROMs, there we see block memory generator. So this is the simple graphical user interface to uh, configure and create block memory arrays. So in this example, we're going to leave many basic options as default, including the single port memory type. And we're going to go straight to the port A options tab. So here we're going to change our write width to 72 bits and our write depth to 2048. So a simple change and then when we click on our summary we can see 
The block RAM resources have been updated here to use four 36 kilobit block RAMs. So then we can simply click OK to generate that memory array. The other method to create a large memory is to write the code to infer a memory array. So to facilitate this, Silynx includes a number of ready-made parameterizable code templates for commonly used features. So to find those code templates, go Window, Language Templates, and we can see here the uh, window opens. So to find the relevant, okay, in this case we'll use a VHDL, we'll go Synthesis Constructs, Coding Examples, let's scroll down to RAM, and here we have the Block RAM option. So in this case, let's make a single port, let's put it in write first mode. And you can see we have all of the code here to insert in the relevant place in your top level design. So you can see the configuration, we can choose the, uh, the RAM data width and depth. And all of the relevant signals and, and uh, code is, is included there for you. So all you have to do, paste that into the, the relevant location and you're done. So once the memory array has been built through the method of your choice, you can see the resulting schematic of the generated four block RAM array. So here you can see there are clear connections from the output cascade of one block RAM into the input cascade of the next block RAM. Now of course this is a schematic view, these memories will actually be oriented vertically as they are in a column, but it's, it's very clear to see that the cascade routing has been used in this instance. So this shows how to create large high performance RAMs with the new ultrascale architecture block RAM cascade. High performance and large array size are obviously two benefits, but there is also a dramatic impact on overall power reduction. Now that we have looked at performance benefits of the block RAM in Cascade mode, let us understand the power benefits that we get as a bonus. Now let's look at some of the code optimizations to enable BRAM power savings. As you have seen previously in this video, Vivado has many examples for BRAM and we are currently look, looking at one such example. Ultrascale devices extend the static power gating capability of 7 series devices and enable power down for unused block RAM blocks. Power gating is enabled on every 18 kilobyte block that is not instantiated in the design to save power. Power gated blocks are not initialized during configuration and this allows for significant static power savings. Also, one of the enhancements for ultrascale BRAM has been the ability to perform dynamic power gating for static current. This is done through the sleep pen. As you can see on the screen, the sleep pen provides a dynamic power gating capability for periods when the block RAM is not actively used. More details on dynamic power gating are available in the memory resources guide. Also, one additional code tip is that in the no change mode, the output latches remain unchanged during a write operation. And no change mode is the most power efficient mode for ultra scale block RAM. Now let's look at how to estimate power for the block RAM using the Xilinx power estimator tool. We will bring up the XPE tool and we will navigate to the BRAM tab. And you will notice immediately that the tool provides for various data inputs corresponding to different BRAM parameters. In this example, we will look at a true dual port block RAM running at 300 megahertz with 50% toggle rate and 50% enable rate. You will also notice that XPE allows for cascade group size setting. There are tool tips for each of these fields if more information is required. We will go ahead and set up the example. We will put in the number of block RAMs in the block RAM column. We will put in the cascade setting in the cascade group size column. 
we will select the right mode along with toggle rate and enable rates. We will set the right clock frequency, bit width and right mode. Repeating the settings for port B. As you can see, there are two power rails of interest for the ultra scale block RAM. And these are the core voltage rail and block RAM voltage rail. On the top, you can also notice the utilization percentage for this example. Now that we have looked at coding examples, power saving features and power estimation methodology, let us look at early silicon numbers from our ultrascale advantage demo. We have a Kintex ultrascale board with a Kintex ultrascale KU40 device and a 7 series board with a Kintex 325T device. The devices are programmed with identical designs. There are two boards KC705 and KCU105 connected to the power demo interface. Now let us enable BRAM for both boards. As you can see, you get a significant 30% savings in power with the demo only putting half of the block RAMs in cascade mode. To summarize, of course, all our devices have block RAMs and just about all designs use them to build bigger memories. You do that by cascading the block RAMs and until now you would have to do that in fabric using up routing resources and losing some performance. In ultra scale we have built in hardened cascading so you maintain performance, free up routing resources and also get significant power savings. Thanks for watching.